All right, Coach, we've done a lot of interviews today, but I'm banking that, uh, hoping I should say, that we're the only ones that brought up the fact that you are a championship coach of a sixth-grade softball <laughs> team. Go Gilbert Softball. That's right. That's right. You're the only one here that has done that, and it's your daughter's team, correct? It, it's my daughter's team. That's exactly right. I, yeah. I know we're a couple of years removed from that, but I just recently read a story that you used that championship story to motivate your guys I did. in a Cy-Hawk game and yeah. beating Iowa. That's right. We hadn't beaten Iowa, and, uh, you know, obviously that's a big deal, and we're at halftime, and, it, you know, it's a crazy game, and I, I just said, listen, I just coached these sixth-grade <laughs> softball girls in the championship <laughs> game, and if we can't figure this out, and they did, I'm going to be really yeah. kicked after this game and that so. softball championship was on the road right it was on the road that's yeah exactly right yeah exactly right so yeah <laughs> you know as coaches you got to use everything absolutely whatever's at your disposal yeah, right that's exactly right okay exactly. so how is coach matt campbell for iowa state football similar and different to coaching your daughter's softball team yeah you know what honestly that was probably one of the highlights of my life you know uh, you know in a, in a small way it probably helped me be a better football coach with our players you know we we, uh, man, we had like four girls that had never played softball before. And, you know, and, and you just, you start playing and, and, and again, you get almost that love of coaching and watching young people get better and, and, you know, be passionate about something. So we, we had a great time. It was honestly a highlight for me. And, you know, obviously to be with my daughter and be able to be a part of that journey and uh, just really, really special for sure. What a difference a year makes. A year ago, everyone's talking about how young you are, and now everyone's talking about how experienced yeah, you are. Yeah. What, what, what a difference in a short period of time. Yeah, yeah. You know, in, in you know, last year, just such a young team and so many unknowns about who we were or where we're going to be. You know, I think internally we felt very optimistic that, you know, we had a lot of talent, um, you know, but really until that talent had the opportunity to perform under the lights and just see who it was and really what exactly it was. Um, and so young, you know, you're, you're talking about 18 true freshmen played last year. You're talking about 14 redshirt freshmen playing for the first time. And that's a lot of it's a lot of youth. And, you know, we showed it early on, but I think you saw and traditionally, I feel like in our place, we have had the unique ability to just keep getting better throughout the football season. And, you know, this team, this young team really believed in that and they got better as the season went. Well, and that included a Big win in Provo against BYU. Rocco Becht and company came in with all that youth. They didn't look like a young team yeah. by the time he came to Provo, Coach. So how do you spin that into this offseason? What do you take from that game specifically that you push through late in the season and you try and take into 2024? Well, you know, I, I think for us, we were able to to win some big games on the road. And, and I do think if you want to be a championship football team, you got to win on the road. And, you know, like, geez, what an unbelievable experience for us, to be honest with you. I mean, one of the great, uh, again, experiences that we had going out to Provo and what an incredible home football environment and a great place to play. And, you know, just to be able to go play and execute enough to win a football game out there, that was huge. And, you know, I, I think what we try to take is, you know, what were the positives from last football season? Where did we grow? What was the mentality that allowed us to, to do some, some great things? You know, first time in our program history, we were able to win four conference road games. Um, but then also, you know, we were, our, our youth showed up at times and showed up in times, you know, we we're right there against Texas to, to have a chance to get to the Big 12 championship game. And, you know, you fell a, you know, you fell a couple plays short and, you know, the same thing happened in the bowl game, you know, got off to a slow start playing on the road at Memphis you know which is you know which is hard playing Memphis at Memphis in, the, in there and they, they kind of came at you and we weren't you know our sharpest early on and end up not being able to win the football game so you know you take the pauses but you also take some of those other areas and you say okay like hey if we want to take another huge step forward and you want to be a championship football team let's let's be authentic let's talk about this as coaches and players where can we be better mm. where where can we grow ourselves forward and I think this group did that and that's been, it's been really fun you know our coaches have done a great job our players have done a great job, and you know, we we're really fortunate to retain all of our football players coming back, which I think is hard to do in college football today, and I think it says a lot, of, a lot about their belief in their coaches and certainly their belief in themselves. The you, recru yeah, the recruiting, yeah. The, the, the players you already have on the roster is now a thing. For sure. <laughs> like, it it just yeah. re-recruiting is yeah. a thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's a thing, but I think it's, 
it's culture, right? It's like, man, what what do these kids believe in in their growth? And I get it. There's some kids that, that want to go, and, and maybe they're they're down the depth chart, and they want to finally get an opportunity to play. Um, but I think the, the bulk load of it is, man, do these young men feel like, you know, you're investing into them and, and that this program is investing into who they are and who they want to be? And so I think there is a small part of that that is, you know, puts a, an onus on us coaches to create a culture and an environment where young people feel safe and confident to grow in the program you mentioned the, the new experiences last year and you know playing BYU in Provo being one of those and now you're, you're adding some other new experiences this year I mean you look at what this conference was two years ago to what it is now it's totally different totally different but 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 probably in some ways very similar that man top to bottom you got to bring your A game and you know I, I think that's the one thing that you know no matter who has been in this conference and I would say this is probably the last five years man, it doesn't matter. Everybody's invested in winning. Everybody wants to be successful. And you better show up and play a football on Saturday or it's going to be really hard to win football games. And I I think that is the one thing that this conference, no matter who's been in it, um, you really feel over the last five years, it's really been the standard of excellence in this conference that you have to be able to play a football to win. You welcome in the four corner schools. And because they are coming from the Pac-12, and they work a lot with speed on the outside, and they put a lot of stock into those talent, those skill positions. And the Big 12 has become like this smash-mouth, hard-nosed football conference. It was thrown around like eight years ago, but now it's like super physical. So what type of differences do you expect with those four schools specifically coming with their style into now smash-mouth football of the Big 12? Well, you know, I, I think that you look at you look at all four of those those programs, and I think they, like you said, they've got athleticism and talent. But man, you've also watched the Utah team. That's you know, obviously, that's how they've won the Pac-12. Yes, that's how with they, that physicality, with, with that physicality and yeah. toughness. And you know, you watch a young Arizona team that grew with elite skill and talent. And so, you know, I I, I think for 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 these four schools coming in, they're probably certainly really equipped to to step in and, and really be great competitors in this conference. So it'll be, uh, you know, if I think four great challenges that and four great challengers that come into the conference for sure. Even with so much experience coming back at very key places all over the field on both sides, what's the area you feel there's probably the most room for improvement? Well, I think the the biggest room for improvement is is the confidence that it takes to play a football week in and week out and you know getting a taste of that a year ago and being able to win back-to-back games and being able to win on the road I think we we got a glimpse of what that looks like but man in in to me that's like understanding the value of your best has to be the standard every day and it's got to be the standard in how you do academics it's got to be the standard of how you go into nutrition it's got to be the standard in the weight room if you want to be that team that it because somebody's going to do it yeah (laughs) somebody will do it and if you want to be that team that is the quality that it takes and i think that's our biggest growth area you know it's not a matter of man do we need to get bigger or stronger and i think all those things had to happen but man do you understand the habits and the mentality that it takes to be your single your best every single day three-time big 12 coach of the year matt campbell is with us on byu sports nation you're looking at some of your numbers and i mean you're the second longest tenured active coach yeah. in the Big 12. Like, it's it's tough to do what you've done, and you're just four wins away from Dan McCarney's school record of 56. To be in your position and have those numbers on the radar, what does that mean to you? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing it means is we've been really fortunate to have great people, you know, and, and I think we're all, you know, fortunate in the profession that we're in to be surrounded by people and by human beings and you know we've been really blessed at Iowa State I mean to be able to have some of the players that I've had the opportunity to coach and be in our in my life and you know have some of the coaches that have been through during our tenure here over nine years uh, it's been nothing short of exceptional and to watch some what some of these guys are doing now in the National Football League as coaches and players you're just really proud of them and so I think you're more humble and grateful of the people that have come through and that are are with you today than you are anything that individually could could say about you because you, as we know this is the greatest team sport known to mankind and it takes all of us moving in the same direction and we've been super fortunate at Iowa State to have great people so you, you you've got football as a coach 
softball we talked about. Is there? Are you going to be adding any other sports to the coaching repertoire? No, I said, uh, you know, I saw Dan Hurley said that he would be a really great football coach. Now I think I would be a really great basketball coach. Let's so go. I, I got these. I got these. I got these <laughs> boys coming. And so you know what? In, in my eighth grade daughter now, she went from softball. She's doing a little basketball. So okay. you know, like on the horizon. <laughs> okay. Maybe an elite basketball coach. Hey, listen, TJ Otzelberger, watch <laughs> Look out. out. Watch That's exactly out. right. That's exactly right. <laughs> Three sport coach right here. Uh, <laughs> Good stuff. Hey, yeah. Coach, uh, we can't wait to watch you play. Awesome. Rocco Becht and the boys go to work. Yeah. Uh, we wish you the best of luck in yeah. 2024, and thanks for uh, taking some time. Awesome, and thank you guys for all you guys have done for the Big 12 and certainly what, what BYU has brought to the conference. It's been really fun to have you guys, and you guys stand for what's right, so thank you. Yeah, thank thanks, you, Coach. Yeah.